so I just want to uh, quickly introduce you. I will come back for Q and A at the end. Sounds good. Um, Anna Forbes, uh, congratulations on your recent Thank marriage. You. Thank uh, you. I was surprised when you sent me the update for your name. <laughs> you on that. You're not the only one. You're not the only one that uh, was surprised by that. Um, so Anna is the executive coach, founder, and CEO of Smooth Consulting Services. She is going to walk us through uh, some, you know, just some really interesting information on how to, you know, promote yourself internally, promote your programs internally. And really sort of own you know your experiences within your company and how to you know get the buy-in from your executive team to continue to develop some of the programs that you've worked on internally as well as you know help drive your career path so um, and I'm really looking forward to this awesome. um, and uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you now and as, uh, as oh. always everyone please put your questions in the chat uh, if you'd like to see the presentation bigger, just double click on it and it will make the screen bigger. And uh, Anna, all over to you. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Matt. I really appreciate this opportunity. Um, again, I totally understand. I'm the one before lunch. You have all been eagerly listening to presentations since uh, bright and early this morning. So um, what I'd love for you to do, if you have, have, you can do so sitting down or however you are doing it, but like stretch, move your neck, just you know, wiggle that energy out. Um, I, I promise to make this as engaging as I possibly can. Uh, while you're kind of stretching, if you can stand amazing, um, do that, I encourage you to do that. I'd love to know who's in the audience. I do recognize some of the names, um, but I don't know everyone admittedly. So give me a sense, are you, a, you know, do you classify yourself as an email expert? Are you a team leader, both perhaps? Um, are you a business partner looking to, to understand this space a little bit more? Just write in the chat, I'd love to get a sense of who's in the audience, uh, making sure that I can, uh, you know, address any anything as we go. So while you're, while you're letting me know who, who you are, I'm gonna start with a, a bit of a story. So how did I even get to this spot? Well, a few years ago, having worked in the, in the email industry myself, um, Matt and Derek and I uh, grabbed some beers. Oh, they were already having beers. In fact, I think that's when they were planning the first summit. Um, at, uh, a local, uh, at a local bar in Toronto here called Betty's. And one of the things, you know, I'd expressed some frustration and some challenges that I was facing and, and they were like, Anna, it's totally normal what you're dealing with. We've dealt with it before. Um, and they, they helped um, explain a bit of how the industry has transformed over the years and, and from, um, early kind of early adopters like them who got into the space and, and really had to ramp up and fast and furious learn the email email marketing and kind of set this that set the tone for where we are today. And then as social media transitioned, there were a lot of chatter around email going away. I'm sure this has been a pain point for some of you um, in kind of uh, helping people understand that email is here to stay. And so in that transition, there's there's a bit of a, a there was a kind of a, a shortfall in expertise, and now that it's picked up steam again, you know, looking at the um, Litmus 2020 uh, state of email report, email is still over 40% ROI. It just makes sense. I'm a digital service provider. I've learned the hard way with trying to get engagement through social media myself, and and now I'm focusing my energy on on better email um, opportunities, and so. You know, I know firsthand from being in the industry as well as being um, being the business owner, doing uh, needing to prioritize email work, how how difficult that can be. And so, um, I want you know you to take as much as you can out of the session. The goal is really to amplify your voices. I think um, I've seen so many hardworking, passionate people in this space, and I'd love to really help amplify your voices. And so that's kind of my goal here in this presentation today. So. I will start. Have you ever had that feeling where your campaign is just like one thing away from crumbling down or that no one really understands what you do? Maybe you've noticed your marketing, your business, your tech lines are not communicating in the same way and it's leaving you at the cross sections. I've witnessed it. I've experienced it. I've seen other people experience it. We, you know, I try and I try and keep up with um, with the trends as much as possible. And so, 
I, I would love for you to um, share any of your challenges in the in the comments. What we're going to do, and and hopefully, if I have time uh, at the end of the session, and if not, we can we can take it away. Is what help you use the framework that I'm about to share to work through some of the challenges that you might be facing, and see how you can reframe it so that you're taking a more leadership strategy approach to solving this problem. So please do, um, I, I'm, I'm gonna try not to pay too, too much to the chat right now and we'll, we'll look at those um, later. Later, I also want you, as we, as we move through this presentation, to put, try and put yourself in the other person's shoes. So whether you are the email expert and you're trying to convey a message to your business partner or your marketing partner, um, if you are that partner looking to understand email more, Try and just for, for a few minutes, um, step into that person's shoes, try and understand where they're coming from, what their priorities are, and what they expect of, of you as, as that person in that space. So um, yeah, let's take it away. All right, so in making sure that I, my assumptions were still valid, my own personal experience was still valid, I, I went out into uh, the world of Facebook and, and there's the Women of Email group as well as the Toronto Email Marketing um, groups. And I posted just a, a quick question around what the biggest challenges were when conveying uh, messages around email marketing to partners and, and clients and, and, and teammates. And telling was, was, um, was the word I came up with when I first saw the results in both, in both instances, the highest was they don't understand the ecosystem of email. So what does that inform me? What does that tell me is there's opportunity here. There's opportunity for email experts to really showcase the expertise, kind of take a different approach and reframe the conversation to allow people to listen, to allow people to understand the benefits, to make it easier. You know, uh, I'm constantly asking, how can I make things easier? How can I make things more efficient? Um, you know, this is the day and age we live in. And so the same thing goes with conveying your message in, in a way that makes sense. And so um, I want really us here today to reframe and start educating so that we can take back the seat that you deserve. I've, one of the things I've seen is hard working, passionate people not necessarily be the happiest humans, especially when dealing with other partners. And so my mission in my business and, and with the leaders that I work with is to, to make fun, make fun, excuse me, make business fun again, make fun, make, was it ever fun? I don't know. Well, we're, we're gonna make it fun um, because we spend so much of our day working. Like. I don't know about you, but in the age of COVID, it was hard to turn off. There were so many times where you just, you just kept going. And so if you're not enjoying the work you're doing, you're not putting out top quality and it, it effectively impacts the bottom line, which is you know, the, the goal of, of operating a business. And so I know I've seen email experts and marketers they care about the business. They care about the business that you guys care about the business drivers. And so I want to bridge that conversation so that those that care and that passion that you have for the business and the goals of the campaign are emulated and understood in your own organizations. So yes, please do take advantage of the chat feature. I'd love to, to hear your stories. All righty, so um, this, this quote from Michael Jordan, uh, why did I put this here? Some people want it to happen, some wish it to happen, and others make it happen. Well, you know, I'm an introvert too, and uh, despite what other people might think, I, it takes a lot of energy for me to do this type of work. And I know fellow email marketers may, may be fitting in that category more than extroverts. So I'm not talking about being loud or obnoxious or using, you know, it's not about being perfect. It's about taking a more strategic leadership approach in the way you're conveying the information so that that um, other it makes it easier for other people, like make it easier for yourself and other people. So my challenge to you is to be the person that makes it happen. You know, leadership is not something that's bestowed upon anyone. In fact, uh, I would argue people that are, are in what are considered traditional leadership positions have been being leaders for a lot longer than, than that title has, has enabled them to be. And so um, in order for us to think about that, I'd like to 
challenge your perceptions of what a leader would look like. So I'm going to go through a few slides. You know, I would love to make this fun and interactive as much as possible. Um, let me know your thoughts as we as we're going through. So I'm not sure if anyone might recognize this blurred out photo, um, but does this look like a leader to you? How can a tennis player um, look like a leader? Well, this is Naomi Osaka, if you don't already know her. She's a, a very young tennis player who is now the highest paid female athlete, surpassing Serena Williams. She's also using, and more importantly, her platform for um, activism and has been a big voice, especially in, around the BLM movement. Now, why does that relate to leadership? How does, how does that connect? Well, she's facing a lot of scrutiny and being told to stick to sports instead of talking about something that she's passionate and, and believes is the right thing to do. And what I love about this example is that she's taking responsibility for something that she cares about and she's using the forum that she does have for, for a difference. She doesn't have to, no one's pressuring her. In fact, probably pe people are telling her you're, you're putting your career at risk by doing this. But, it, but she's really standing for something and I think that's, that's such a beautiful message. Now, what about this? This piece of paper on a bulletin board? Well, I went for a walk um, earlier last week and I stumbled across this piece of paper and I thought it was really interesting. It, um, if you can't read it, it, it is calling for uh, kids between the ages of 10 and 12 to have a back to school meetup or hangout. And so these beautiful humans, Amaya and Ren, hopefully I'm saying their names correctly, put themselves out there. They, they probably, they, you know, I'm going to presume they saw a challenge. Perhaps they were feeling lonely and, and, um, and not in an ability to meet with with their own friends and now with back to school connecting with other other people and so they they've taken responsibility and they've kind of put themselves out there even if they don't think anyone's going to show up and sometimes that's what it is it's doing the thing even if no one shows up now i'm going to leave this one here does anybody can anyone guess who this one might be it's a little closer to home Someone you might recognize. <laughs> yep, Victor, you guessed it. I put you here. Why? Um, I'm going to guess, since you're here, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to guess you're a little red and maybe a little shocked. And the reason I put you here is because while I can't speak to your job for performance and perhaps your, your uh, superiors are here, I don't know, I, I don't know. I, didn't, I promise I didn't talk to anyone about this. But I put you here because in, in I believe it was 2017, you, just, you saw a gap and you decided that you were gonna create a, an email community. And you put yourself out there all the time, you volunteer your time for this, you show up no matter who shows up. In fact, I don't even think you know this, but you reached out to me. We didn't even know each other. We were never introduced. There was no soft intro, but Victor was courageous and vulnerable enough to put himself, um, to send me an email or sorry, a LinkedIn message and uh, connect with me because he was looking for speakers and, and people to build out this community that he was fostering. And so why did I think that this was awesome? Because leadership is that it's courageous it's vulnerable it's challenging you you can say no people will say no or or criticize but you still do it and and personally as a personal thank you victor you actually approached me at a time where i knew there had to be a better way i was helping um, level up the email space in the company i was working at and I didn't have access to people that knew more than me. I had actually basically done a crash course in email marketing, uh, taking on that job. And when you reached out, the timing was impeccable. We were dealing with issues. I, that's how I connected with Matt and other people in this group. And I was just amazed at the support, the involvement, the willingness to share. And so, you know, that to me is leadership, even if, um, you know, beyond taking it outside of, of a daily context. So, so Victor, uh, hopefully you're, you're coming down from, from the uh, rosy red cheeks, uh, but I wanna thank you uh, personally uh, through this presentation. So I challenge your, perspec your, your um, perspectives on leadership. You don't need to have a title. You don't need to 
um, ha be in a certain position. You can choose to be a leader. And I'm, and I want you to know that being on the defensive is not where the magic happens. So I'm going to walk you through a three step framework. I do this with my clients. It's obviously more involved than our, our, uh, a few minutes together, but I'm certainly going to do my best to walk you through um, kind of simple, easy steps that you can take away so that uh, when you leave this, um, you have something to work from. So the three steps are reclaiming your authority, demonstrating your expertise, and finding your leadership moxie. Now, on the surface, they might be simple, but let's get into this a little bit further. So what does reclaiming your authority mean? It's recognizing and owning the fact that you are a leader. I the fact that you took time out of your busy schedule to be here today is evidence enough that you're a leader in this space. You care, you're willing to learn, you're continuing to evolve. That, that in and of itself is, is a key indicator. Now, we've gotten that part out of the way. How you start your day and how you show up definitely sets the tone for the rest of your day. And so one of the things I encourage um, with my clients and I do myself is having a bit of a morning check-in. People talk more routines and things like that. I, I won't get as, as linear and boxy as that um, because it's taken me some time to evolve my own practice. But just even taking five minutes while you're having your coffee, while you're, you know, before you leave the house, the, well, we're not leaving the house. I need to check myself there. But before you, you know, log into the computer to start your day is really deciding how you are going to show up and, and choosing to step into that confident leader that you are. You know, let me, let me use a different scenario. Have you ever had a, a situation where a colleague or friend or even your partner started kind of first thing in the morning, sh shared with you something, com maybe complained, didn't, wasn't the best um, news? How did that tone affect you the rest of the day? Were you as sharp as you could have been? Were there opportunities for you to reset yourself throughout the day? So finding those things that work for you. For me, it's taking a walk midway through the day, um, listening to music that I love. Um, there's a lot of different tips that you can do to really get yourself into the best state and showing up. Just like your campaign, making sure your campaign is optimal, making sure you're optimal as you start your day is, is uh, the best thing you can do for yourself. Now, demonstrating your expertise. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, but I want to reinforce this point because I think sometimes sometimes there's multiple ways of demonstrating your expertise. So I know um, you all know how important a data-driven story is, and it focuses on the facts. But what happens in the, in the event that there's no data? Sometimes the data isn't available. It's not enough. Um, it doesn't justify what, what you know, the other person is um, thinking about. And so are using this community, using the email geeks Slack channel, using the networks you have in the email space to really support your, your data-driven or evidence-driven story. Checking in with fellow experts, a lot of times when I was up against the wall and my expertise were being questioned, you know, pulling in experts that could speak to what I was trying to convey sometimes allowed the message to be understood in a different way. And so we supplemented each other. It was never, you know, oh, I wasn't being listened to. It was how can I be strategic about changing this course of a conversation and and supplementing with experts in the field, um, especially with this community who's so supportive and and so interested in in, um, in moving the needle. Um, there's lots of opportunity to work together here. And now, you know, are you speaking a common language? So um, how many of you might use jargon in a day? And I really ask you that question. Um, because your audience and the person you're trying to convey the message to may not understand it. Using a language that they are more receptive to will, um, one, get the defenses down. There's no threat of, you know, when someone's an expert, the, another person can feel not as smart around you, truth be told. I've had that. I've, you know, had people with PhDs and bigger degrees than me and you know, and they may be scientists, uh, the, the work I was doing, I was around people that were highly educated and, and sometimes, or, or in a tech space that I, I didn't totally know about. And so 
that can feel very um, nerve wracking because you're trying to understand from their vantage point. And so I ask you to, you know, part of the reason I asked you at the beginning is to step into your partner's shoes is because then you can understand the language that they're more receptive to. It will allow um, less resistance. So I ask you, are you speaking emailese? When I was trying to learn email, I was all these words, beautiful words, but were thrown at me and I had no idea. I had to do the number of Googling for, you know, definitions was incredible. And so I think as, you know, a bit of the curse of the expert is you forget that other people don't always know these words. So deliverability, how can, how can you frame deliverability in a way that's more common? Tell me in the chat. What about honeypot or hard bounce? You know, we're not talking about basketball or, or where you put your, your honey. <laughs> yeah, Victor, it, it's not easy. I had to think about them too, because I started, you know, now they're a little bit easier for me to understand, right? Um, deliverability, potential to, for the email to reach the inbox, yeah. Making sure emails get to the inbox. Never use honeypot, don't even know the term. Well, there you go, there's that. So so this is just a sample. Like I actually, um, HubSpot has a blog on all the email terminology that you should know or marketers should know. And I think, you know, you might be thinking, my, my, my business should know. Maybe, maybe the marketer and the business owner you're dealing with, if, if email is important to them, maybe they should learn, but that's not up to you. That's up to them to learn. My challenge to you is how can you, you know, your goal isn't to teach them the words, it's to get, you know, what you're trying to convey across. And so reframing it can certainly be a, a really easy way to do that. So I'm going to use the example. So some of these um, comments uh, are awesome. One of the things that like, literally, I had a mind blowing experience was at the summit last year, Matt had done this walkthrough of the tech behind, you know, the minute you set, set uh, hit send, and he 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 connected it to your your post mail. You know, when you do a physical mail, we, I know we don't do this much anymore, but how many of us grew up in an era where snail mail was a thing? So you put that snail mail in the mailbox, and you magically trust somebody to pick that up, bring it to the sorting center sort it properly, make sure it's on the truck to, to the appropriate, you know, um, postal code and get it not just on the front lawn of some neighborhood, but actually at your door. Holy crap. Now I understood deliverability in a way that was like, oh, I get how I can communicate this differently. And so it's, it's how can you take non email, maybe context and switch it, you know, have you ever tried learning a language? I'm going to sit here because I, I see how many people um, have reacted to this. Have you ever tried to learn another language? It's not easy. What about, you know, I, my, my husband, we, M Matt mentioned I got married. My husband's from the Bahamas. He speaks English. His, his, his language is English. But his context where he grew up is different than me. So we might use the same word, but the context may not be the same. And so part of our communication work is making sure that if there's something that doesn't totally land that we're, we're talking about it. And so I use these kind of, you know, the other example uh, I can think of is drive when back when you learned how to drive, you were in the driver's seat, but you didn't, you weren't the expert. So your business partners in the driver's seat, but they're not the expert. You're leaning on the person in the passenger seat to support you in that driving experience. And they have to do it in a way that doesn't stress you out or else you're going to make a mistake. So, you know, I encourage you, I think we, we work in very high stress environments, moving super fast. And we often don't take that time to just like chill out, check in and really understand how each other um, works. And I love this quote from my birthday buddy, Mr. Einstein, and he wrote, you cannot solve the problem, our problems with the same thinking that you use to create them. So what I'm encouraging you today to do is step out of your existing 
um, mindset in, in, you know, if there's a challenge that occurs, you need to, you know, it would be valuable for you to kind of take a, a pause, reset, and because your solutions opportunities might be greater with, with that thinking, with that new thinking. Take that walk, listen to music, just breathe. The power of breath, there's so many people that do breath work and meditation, you know, why is that important? Because breathing, we just calm our nervous system. And so this, these are just some, hopefully some quick, quick tips um, to allow you in that moment of like high intensity to really pause um, and reset. So um, I used the word moxie earlier. I wanna break this down. What does leadership moxie mean? And the Merriam Weber dictionary defines it as energy, pep, know-how, courage, and de determination. And why do I like this for leadership? Well, I've been studying leadership ever since I can remember. My bookshelf is full of leadership books. I uh, I was obsessed with like politics as a kid. I don't ask me why. Um, and what I observed is we're in a world where people are talked at. We tell people what leadership is and what makes a good leader and it's this and that and all these rules. And with the, all these rules makes it really uncomfortable for people to try and enter. And so, I want to reframe this. I want to shift this conversation and help you understand who you are so that leadership just becomes a natural outpouring of that. And so understanding who you are is, is the core of what I practice with my clients. And uh, so I'm going to take you through a bit of, of what that means and how do you find your moxie. So there's kind of, I, I'm, breaking, I'm breaking it down into three pieces. Play, really play to your strengths. Knowing one of the very first things I do with I did this with myself with my clients when I when I was when I I decided to leave um, uh, from being an employee and, and set up my own business and so it challenged me to question what I really wanted to be doing what I like doing and so I I uh, the leaders I work with whether they they are employees or they have their own business we focus on understanding their strengths to start. Just like a professional uh, sports team, everyone on the team has a role to play and they play to their strengths. No one that's a great defensive player is typically a forward in a soccer game, for example. You know, I played soccer most of my life and um, I dabbled in playing um, striker, but often I was way better at defense. And so I, that's, I just tried to get better at that. And so that's the um, space of, knowing yourself enough to know where you're really strong at. You know, are you um, someone who's like lighthearted and likes to make jokes? That's, that's, a, that's great, Let, use that to your advantage. The next piece is, I know we strive to be experts in our field and our craft and, and this is why you're here, this is why you are at the email summit. I encourage you to be an expert learner. Understanding that expertise is a moving target. If I pulled Matt and Victor and Tana and, and other people on this, um, on this uh, group, how much continuous learning they have to do to keep their expertise top notch. Matt, I don't know if you're here. Uh, I'm gonna guess you're like reading every day or something, at least once a day. Maybe that's a, a extensive and that's you know part of his job, but he's all day, every day, exactly. So. So being an expert learner instead of focusing on being the expert at the thing is going to set you apart because expertise is a moving target. From, from the early, early email marketing and how that was done to where it's evolved today has transformed so much in such a little period of time. And so um, that's, it doesn't mean that if you're an expert today in that, that that's gonna be the same. And so you have to decide how you want to continue to move forward. And then shoring it up, really using this defined strength and, but then refining and optimizing. So I like a test and learn approach. We use this terminology in marketing. I'm gonna use it here. Test and learn, try something, adjust a couple elements, tweak it and see what does better. Start using you know, data and the same thing with your personal leadership. Can you take, you know, if something doesn't work, it doesn't mean it's never gonna work, but maybe there's something that you can tweak to adjust it. So really the choice is yours. You can battle it out with your partners and your clients and your, and your experts, or you can choose to take 
a more strategic leadership approach. And I really believe that the the roles here in this industry, back to the poll um, that I that I showcased earlier, is available. There's there is a gap in in understanding of how email marketing truly can benefit a business. And so um, it's important that this audience and this group of experts really um, help mobilize this conversation so that it becomes easier to do business. It becomes less um, less difficult. And, and maybe maybe there are more efficiencies that we can find and, and, and in a collaborative model. So let's test this out. Matt, I think I'm going to need your help for this. Um, earlier, I had asked for some examples on some challenges. Did we get any? Did we get any good um, suggestions? Let me see. I'm going to scroll back up in the comments. Okay, I'm seeing what people do. Did anyone have a challenge that they're facing that they're willing to kind of share, um, so we can walk through the framework? If not, I have an example we can use. Okay, I'm gonna just, because of time, I'm gonna make sure that we go through it. All right, so an example is, um, you know, the, the business that you're working with or the client you're working with um, is insistent on changing several elements in the email, but you know the integrity of your campaign or that particular send is gonna be impacted. It's not gonna reach uh, the inbox. Um, the ISPs are gonna, are gonna market as spam, whatever whatever the information that you know is relevant to this, um, something that they're insisting. Well, how can you use the three simple steps that I've shared with you today, reclaiming your authority, demonstrating your expertise, and finding your moxie to apply to this type of scenario? So one, it's, you know, you might be hijacked or you know emotionally charged when you're like, oh, I just worked on this day in and day out. I like, we need to get it out you want to change and this doesn't make any sense. I, I know firsthand I was that person. Um, I'm sure I'm not, uh, I'm not making, making this, the scenario is maybe more common than we'd uh, unfortunately like it to be. And so one, it's choosing how you're going to show up. It's taking that minute to regroup your thoughts, set yourself up for success, go, okay, this is a challenge. It's not something that's unsolvable. How can I approach it in a way that one conveys the message I'm trying to do to share, which is if you change these elements, it's not going to work, period. How can you then demonstrate your expertise by perhaps leveraging some data, past campaigns, some information, maybe some blogs, some best practices that you can reference and really give the business or the marketer um, a choice in the matter, perhaps posing it as a question to them. Okay, well, yes, we can do what you're suggesting. And here is the um, ramifications or impact of doing that. Now you have a dialogue as opposed to kind of that battle. And I would even um, take it one step further in terms of using your own style, your own personal leadership moxie. If you have, you know, if you like cracking jokes, try and try and bring some humor into maybe, you know, uh, appropriate jokes is, is important, but you know, try and bring a bit more humor into the conversation to lighten the air and make it less difficult. Um, use that analytical expertise that you bring forward, um, but paint a picture. Learn the language that this person um, likes to un uh, understand. Uh, if they are a visual learner, perhaps putting it in a one page slide, uh, drawing it out on a piece of paper, getting off of, you know, in this digital world, how many of you are using chat and Slack and whatever communication channels in writing, and some things are getting lost in that communication, you know, picking up a phone, I know this is, you know, dating myself, we have cell phones, pick them up. Um, and so sometimes we forget those little um, little, what seem like simple things, but we, when we're working really aggressively in a day, we can often forget that these are ways to um, move the needle forward. So if I can leave you with anything um, to take away, it's, you know, confidence is key. I really work with my clients to make sure that they're stepping into their own personal confidence. It has nothing to do with my own, you know, validation or other people's um, interest helping shore up your expertise and, and showcase them in a way that uh, conveys the message and the, and the goal of what you're trying to do. Embracing your own personal leadership style and ultimately making this a win-win so that it's beneficial for both sides. 
And that's it. Um, I'm hopefully you, uh, if you took anything away from today, it's that you do have uh, an opportunity and I would love it. I honestly would. It's, uh, commitment is one of the key principles out of leadership and especially as a business owner, I, I commitment. If many times I wanted to maybe walk away, but, <laughs> but sticking through it is, is a key driver. So commit to doing something after today that might be different than what you are, um, than what you've considered doing. Use the chat as a way to kind of put it out there. Um, no, you know, no one's gonna hold you to it, but use this as a way to keep yourself accountable. Thanks very much, Anna. That was fantastic. Um, I had a couple questions and, and yeah. hopefully we'll get a few come through the chat. Um, you know, I, I've you know worked with a lot of people in the past that, you know, they're a little more introverted, maybe a little more shy. You know, you and I tend to have big personalities. So even even that can intimidate people. How do you how do you empower those people with sort of the, you know, you know they're not as vocal maybe to to become more vocal. Um, you know, are there tools that maybe they should be using? You know, is, is email maybe a better tool for them to vocalize some of this because it's less confrontational? Maybe. Do you have any suggestions yeah, on that? I do. Um, so. I love that you said we're big personalities. I was, I call this like I was conditioned to be an extrovert and then burnt out really hard and figured out I wasn't. So, you know, it's not about being loud. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I speak. So I like, I know I'm, I have to be on. I did a lot of work to prep to be on. And there's going to be a lot of un, unprepping or letting go uh, before I can even do any work today. So um, that's because I know myself so much. And, and I'm using that personal example because you, you don't have to have the big personality, but I think it's know yourself enough to know what you need. So if you are that quieter person, I have a client, she's a business owner. She's definitely more quiet. I've managed people who are more quiet. Use your introverted way of working to your advantage. I think we often, we work, we work in a world where extroverts are rewarded. And so um, I don't think that needs to be the case. I think we can, if we play more to our strengths and instead of using the energy to try and be, you know, put on a persona that doesn't work for us because that's more energy for an extrovert. If you're trying to put on an extroverted, like really energized um, persona, that's a lot of work. And it's taking away the energy from where you can actually focus in the space that works for you. So yeah, email, maybe maybe like I, I suggested earlier, your audience may be visual learners. And so you might have had the conversation or you typed it in an email, but then supplementing it with a, some sort of pictorial diagram or um, you know screenshots of, of what you're working on can supplement the message you're trying to do without that extra, without like a ton of extra effort. Like you don't have to make a video for your client um, or your person, but you can, you know, use screenshots or pictures to help help supplement the the message you're trying to convey. Great, thanks. thanks. Yeah, and, and I know, like I I love email too. Sometimes you know you just need to disconnect and not talk to to somebody that day. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can be very verbose in email, right? Um, yeah. So I think that is a, a good example of. And good business email is a whole other, like it's email <laughs> to like send as marketing is a different, uh, different kind of game than, than a business writing email. Like that's a, there's a whole other system for how to, how to write a good effective business email. <laughs> so uh, Victor has a question here and it's, uh, yep. how do you re reconnect into the system? You know, as you said, things get busy, you get back to the daily grind. You know, what's a good way to step back run yourself through some sort of, you know, mental prep potentially, you know, even yeah. though, you know, even if you only have a few minutes, so I guess like this goes back, I think to your sort of daily sort of yeah. morning start. It's, it's daily, but it can also be throughout the day. So, because we can, you know, there, we can be triggered at any points, you know, I have, I can't always, I, I do my best to plan my day and have the meetings as a, as I plan, but sometimes somebody says something and it didn't, doesn't sit well with me and, you know, that's my own stuff that that's um, causing that to happen. And so, um, you know, making sure I'm not bringing the tension from whatever that particular engagement was to the next thing by it is literally as simple as taking a breath. That's like if you have no time and you're like back to back calls, 
before you know zoom whatever you're using sometimes takes a minute to to connect or before your video you turn the you know the waiting room or whatever is a new awesome feature because use that time to be bring consciousness to that breath you're taking and um and and kind of help reset if you can have five minutes and or go for a walk, you know, do that. I know with COVID that becomes a little harder, but pace around, pace around your your condo uh, as much as you can. Um, the other thing too that I encourage is that morning check in. When you set your, when you decide how you want your day to unfold, it becomes a lot easier. I created, I resisted journaling for so long, and I ended up with uh, the help of my clients creating um, kind of a prompting sheet um, because it was less like ruled lines was very school like academic and it didn't just it didn't sit with me so we i created a sheet that um so if anybody wants that reach out to me after i'm happy to to pass that along it is it is free um and so i'm happy to to share that with people great thanks one last question before we go there's a <laughs> i see that <laughs> favorite leadership or mindfulness oh talk. my goodness this is always a tough question that is us. a tough question um because uh mindfulness is is a kind of a category and leadership is a category and they're, they're uh, they're coming together, but uh, not. Um, I actually created a quiz, and out of the quiz, I have uh, leadership books associated with it. So, Rosa, maybe I'll uh, message me, and I'll get you the quiz. But um, I do love Brene Brown's uh, Dare to Lead. I think um, her data centric approach to leadership is different, and and I like that. Um, I do, from a mindful mindfulness perspective. Um, uh, Kaufman writes a book called Conscious Business, so understanding how to communicate in business. Um, there's also uh, more creative books that I'm happy to share. So I'm I'm my I'm thinking of too many, and my bookshelf is in the other room, so I can't even look at anything. But uh, I'm happy to share um, after this as well. Great, thanks, thanks Rosa. Um, everybody, we're gonna break for lunch now, but please again engage in the uh, networking. Uh, with your fellow participants here today. Uh, please engage with our sponsors. Uh, they made today possible um, and definitely want to uh, make sure that you do check them out. They've got some fantastic videos that they've put together as well as some uh, presentations uh, that you can go watch. It's really easy to engage with them. So please do stop by over the lunch break. And at one o'clock, I will be back to chat with the head of enforcement with the uh, Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission uh, at 1 p.m. Um, so please do take the next hour, uh, check your email, check in with our sponsors, check in with your fellow attendees and uh, grab a bite to eat. So uh, thank you very much again, Anna, for joining us. Thanks, Matt. And I put up my contact info, I realized. <laughs> I was saying reach out and I didn't put it up there. So please take a screenshot, um, message me. I think I'll be on on for a bit longer and um, message me through this as well if, if anything great thanks very much everyone thank you